guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another vlogmas if you are new here please do not forget to like comment and subscribe um to my channel so you don't ever miss a vlog a mommy and me episode and of course we drop in vlogmas vlogs all december long okay so this vlogmas is just a little short little cute little let me do my i'm doing my makeup and i was like oh yeah we have to do a part two of the q a because y'all had asked so many questions i didn't get them all in the last one so i was like let me just answer some more questions hopefully i can get to the ones that i all the ones that i didn't do last time i kind of don't remember all the ones i did do but we'll see okay so a lot of y'all asked this even though i did tell y'all that this wasn't about carlos i said questions about me and me only but i'm feeling nice today because i wanted to do a separate q a for me and carlos and then answer all the carlos questions there but a little separate today i will answer this one everybody wants to know how did me and carlos meet so this is really crazy but growing up i had a fake id <laughs> And I used to be out hanging out in the clubs in the city like before I was really 21. I used to be in the clubs with the grown folks. I don't know. I always just been grown. So back in the day we used to have well we still got Uptown but it's not called Uptown no more or it moved. It's not the, the one that we met. At. But anyways I used to go to Uptown Comedy Corner every Sunday and I always 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 have been in love with comedy. Like I've always been in love with like performing performing arts yeah i've always been in love with performing arts and i used to go sneak in i didn't know if i i didn't necessarily like i loved comedy but i didn't ever think i could be a comedian i just loved watching it and i love like being funny like i just love comedy so i used to sneak in the comedy club on sundays i was like 19 Carlos used to be one of the comedians that was you know going up and on stage at that com he was up and well, he had really already been on TV, so I wouldn't really say he was up and coming, but he was not where he is now. We were way younger. This is like 14, 13, 14 years ago. But anyway, so yeah, I used to be in the club, <laughs> sneaking in the club. And afterwards, everybody would like smoke on the back porch or the back patio. And I used to just, I knew everybody. So just from being from my family home in the strip club, like I knew so many people and so many people used to just look out for me. So uh um, basically just used to be hot, honey, grown, sneaking in the club. I met him sneaking in the, in, in the comedy club. And from there, like, we didn't date immediately. It's crazy because I was talking to somebody else and he was talking to somebody else. That's so crazy. And we knew the people that each other was talking to, too. But I just kind of always liked him. I always thought he was so funny. I always thought he was so cute. And then we basically, like, two th maybe two years went by and then we started dating for real then so yeah we met we knew each other for maybe like two years before we ever started dating so that's how we met we met at the con at, at, at the comedy club and then of course like back then it was only twitter so we followed each other on twitter and we used to just stay in touch like that i had one away to school at gramlin i was at gramlin he came down there had a show at gramlin we linked so but we were still just friends we wasn't like even dating or nothing so i have known that man since i was really before that i was young but i was sneaking he didn't know how old i was you know because i ain't had no business being there so he wasn't being weird it was me <laughs> being grown but yeah that's how we met in the comedy club and i thought then like i knew then like dang this nigga funny as hell like he's so funny so yeah that's how we met let me go to the next question how are you doing mentally i will say i'm doing good mentally right as of lately i was struggling for a minute i ain't gonna lie this year was real 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 hard but the last couple of weeks the last two weeks i say been really good for me mentally and even just doing that thing that i did with tiara and the healing like that opened up so so much for me like i feel like it healed my heart like my heart was starting to get heartened just from all the things like life trauma you know things that we naturally go through i feel like after that it really opened up my heart chakra and i'm feeling way better i'm feeling way better all right let me get the next question so thank you for asking um how did you lose weight and keep it off for years so for me i have a basically like a number in my head for me is i'm never going over 200 pounds again unless i'm pregnant you know you can't really control that but 
and I'm be, I'm taller, so I can kind of carry weight a little bit better than a lot of people. So I can be damn near, I could be 185, 190, and, and, and it could look good on me. But I know that 200 is where you draw the line. So I feel like, and I talk about this in my book, Deactivated Fat Girl. You should click the link in the bio, link below, and shop it so you can get it. But um, I'm not going into way more detail about like everything I did and like how it transformed me mentally, spiritually, emotionally when I lost the weight and like the different things that I had to like relearn about myself and things like that. Like I even had to date differently. But um, yeah, so. I basically don't let my, when I get up to 190s, I be like, all right now, I have a yellow number and a red number, and like 195, 190, between 190 and 195 is the red number. 180 is like, all right, babe, you can bring it on down, you can relax a little bit. So just having those numbers, like goals that you feel like, okay, I'm never going past this and sticking to it, keeps you from going overboard, like especially in the holiday season, things like that. You be like, all right, let me chill. You know, I'm already a little on the bigger side. Relax, sis. So, yeah, that's how I do it. I definitely you. That's like the main thing that I feel like. And I just work out. I made working out a lifestyle. Like, you'll see, I don't go too long without going to the gym. No matter what's going on, I make sure that I'm like staying in it in some kind of way and just continuously living a life of like fasting every so often, doing detox and stuff every so often, making that just part of my lifestyle. Why did I quit radio? Um, I just needed a break. And I felt like at the station that I was at at the time, there was no room for growth. Like, they didn't have any space or room for me to grow in that season, in that area. And I just felt like it was called to. The math wasn't mathing. Okay. How do you adjust to being in a relationship? I don't know. I think I might have answered that one. Um, Just to be on the safe side. How do you adjust to being in a relationship after being single for so long? child two things i have to make sure that i am constantly keeping my man in the loop of what i got going on just out of respect like i want him to know that i'm like i'm never trying to be on the weird shit or but i'm just so used to being single and moving and grooving and doing what i want to do making sure i balance that of like keeping him in the loop but also making sure that i spend time doing things that i want to do personally and going home spending time in my own space Spending time uh, making sure that I'm prioritizing things that I like to do. Prioritizing the things that make me feel full. And just balancing them out. I, it's so hard. Like, balance is so impossible. Like, you know what I mean? It's always going to be something you could be improving on or working on. So, I just try to give myself grace with that and do what feels good to me. If, if going home feels necessary, I'll go home. If going to do something by myself feels good i'll do that but i also be mindful and like keep him in the loop so he don't feel like i'm being weird or you ghosting today or you know what i'm saying just being mindful of your partner and communicating i've been really good and being really strong about communicating what my needs are in this season because how's somebody gonna give you what you need if you don't even know what you need you feel me boom let's go to the next question how tall am i five nine i feel like i answer that all the time but What's a hard truth that you've had to tell yourself recently? Um, that's good. A hard truth that I had to tell myself recently is that I can't change things that have happened to me in my life or things that have happened in the past. But what I can change is the narrative that I'm telling myself. That's something that I'm really like, because I will harper on sometimes the negative or the bad aspects of the things that happen but it's like you can only that's you don't have to stay in that space if you don't want to and a lot of times i have held myself back that's another thing a hard truth is like a lot of people would take your hand and be winning way harder with it so that's that's a you problem babe that ain't a you need more that ain't a god help you with this that ain't a nothing else you that's a you you need to do like People have less and do more, and you sit here complaining because you don't have more. How do that work? Yeah, that's that's a real hard truth. Dang, that's a good question. I think they were saying it kind of cut off. What do you feel like you know more about your mom than you did before doing a podcast? I think I just learned more that my mom is really. I'm so. I I think my appreciation and my my love for her grew because it's like wow you're a human being as well and you're not just my mom 
And I learned that my mom is way more open-minded than I gave her credit for. She's way more loving and understanding than I ever gave her credit for growing up. And I'm grateful for that. And I learned that she really does give me the freedom to be myself. And a lot of people don't have that. So I'm so, so grateful for that. I, don't, I didn't realize that before the podcast. What has the entertainment and content creation business taught you the most about yourself? Ooh, what has it taught me? Um, that one, my personality is a gift. That that is a talent in itself. And I didn't know that growing up. I felt like I was so talentless. Like I didn't have, like what? A gift or a talent. Baby, I can't sing or dance. What I'm gonna do? You know? But this space and content creation has taught me that like, nah, babe, personalities is a gift. Everybody don't got one. <laughs> so, yeah. It's taught me that um, just appreciate the gifts that you have. And that you can monetize off of every aspect or every type of gift that you have to. Um, don't be afraid to do that. And don't be... And another thing, I hate promoting stuff. I hate promoting even things that are about myself. But it's teaching me that... Because I, I think I have this pride thing of like, I don't like big and or I don't want nobody to feel like I need them or whatever but just being mindful that you know how people gonna hear what you got going on if you ain't promoting it how they gonna know or support you know and that, and that, that's not begging and if you won't promote and support your own stuff why how why would other people do it so i'm learning to like break out of my shell when it comes to that because i definitely struggle with that babe definitely struggle with that that's one thing i learned that i hated i learned that i didn't like asking for help or beg or asking for support you know until i like had to promote things or sell things which brings me to y'all go buy them waist trainers they 40 dollars and they on sale okay we're trying to get rid of them so i can get you know going on the next next project i want to work on and i have a few more in each size actually and they're only 40 dollars. and i know we all getting right for the new year getting our fitness right so just click that link below and grab yourself or a, a waist trainer for somebody else. You know, a fitness girl is a great Christmas gift. A little stocking stuff where you can add it to a little basket. Like, girl, I know you've been on your fitness journey. Here go on the waist trainer. Um, all the way up to 3, 4X we go. So, make sure you grab those. Okay, somebody said, I was wondering if you reached out to your half-sister. And I did not. After after what y'all saw, I didn't. I hate, I, I don't know. I'm just so nervous. I feel like... Uh, yeah i was really scared about that i was really really scared i i did not reach out to my half sister because y'all i don't know what like i'm just so nervous about and we actually talked about that on ernestine podcast when you know i it was part of vlogmas i went there too but i'm just so nervous about that i don't know i'm scared to tell her i don't know if she knows that our father was a sperm donor I don't know what her mama done told her, but I don't want to blow her life up. Like, I respect that whatever her mama told, I don't, you know, it's just, I get anxiety thinking about it, honestly. Honestly, I do. I really get anxiety thinking about it. Do I do? It's that Charlotte Tillsbury. I usually use a pink one, but let me use the, oh, this too bright. I don't know if I like this. This color, let me see. Let me maybe mix it with the pink. But yeah. Oh no, this one look. Yeah, I'm scared to say something to Shawty, so I have not reached back out to her. I don't know what y'all think. Y'all think I'm tripping? I do know she live in Atlanta though. So I don't know, I should, I should. I know everybody tell me like, reach out to her. Go try to find your dad. But it's like, y'all don't have this, this anxiety that i have so i don't know yeah it's like y'all don't have the anxiety that i have wrapped around it so you find them <laughs> that's how i be feeling but yeah i don't know i might i don't know and if i don't ever i don't feel like i'm missing on the out on nothing i think it's cool that i have this story but i don't really be feeling like oh my god if i just knew my family oh that's pretty let me put a little bit i'm just extra i'm just with a little bit more just don't need don't even need it i haven't reached out since then what if she find me and be like bitch you and me <laughs> ah i'm hollering 
what were your earlier days like breaking into the industry mindset struggles setbacks um i really struggled with trying to be everywhere and thinking that that was going to make me elevate in my career when really you can just do the work and yes you should be networking and going to networking events but i used to be everywhere like the club the i feel like i had to be everywhere like and that was just really unnecessary, babe. Burning yourself out. I used to go through like thinking, oh, if I follow this director or if I, you know, I heard they're having a Christmas party. If I go to their Christmas party, like I used to think all of that. And it's like kind of, but no, like use discernment. Like sometimes being in these places will get you ahead. And then sometimes you just really out and about for no reason. And nothing going to get you ahead like doing the work. Meaning going to acting classes, um, studying your craft, producing your own stuff. Like nothing going to put you ahead like what you going to do for you. You know what I'm saying? And so stop looking for, I think that's what one of my biggest problems was too. I was always looking for somebody to give, to do, to put me on, create a job for me. When it was like, create the jobs for yourself, babe. Create the content, put it, put your own money up. Believing in yourself got me further than anybody of ever else has believed in me. And not to say that people haven't believed in me because they have, but yeah, it's just a, it's like why, why you spend more time waiting like a sitting duck when you could just be doing the work, you could be doing it yourself. And I think that if I had to believe in myself a lot more sooner i probably would have been further like putting my own money up buying my own equipment um producing my own stuff on youtube like these are things that everybody has access to even like using your phone again using what you got and winning with it because people got less and they be doing more and a lot of the times the people who be doing their stuff with less be popping faster because it's more inspiring it's like dang you made this whole thing from your iphone not not this but you get what i'm saying like that's how people be looking at it so stop waiting that's what i would tell myself my younger self stop waiting for somebody to give you something you can give yourself and eventually i did come around to that but i think i wasted so much time believing that somebody else was my gatekeeper this is so much better when i don't wear foundation don't i look so much prettier that's when i feel the prettiest with makeup on with no foundation okay so yeah this is my cute little look for the night getting ready to go to the holiday party you guys saw that in the last vlog and or you will see it because i'm about to go this is separate let me make sure let me see if i have any other questions that i can answer the ones about carlos i'm not going to answer because i'm going to post another thing and you guys can answer ask whatever y'all want to ask about carlos in a separate q a hopefully we can get him to do it i told y'all about how me and jackie met right like how she came to my birthday dinner and then we always used to see each other at events. Yeah, I think I said that. Somebody said, how do you stay disciplined? And what advice would you give to somebody that is looking to be disciplined? I or struggling with discipline. Pick two to three things that you are going to commit to every single day. Or two to, whatever the thing is. If you're like, I'm going to work out three times a week. No matter what, get that shit done. It don't matter what time of the day. It don't matter when you just get it done. Um, and you pick three things that you can really hone in on. Don't be trying to be disciplined on everything at once. Prioritize. This month, I'm being disciplined on my eating. This month, I'm not doing no, or this week, I'm not doing no sugar. This, whatever it is, just build yourself up to it. Don't be trying to tackle everything at once because that's when it gets overwhelming. Just take your time. You, you got time, babe. So, take your time to build up your discipline in different areas and then it'll you'll see it flowing over in other areas and then you'll get stronger and stronger at it do i have any siblings i believe i answered that last time but yes i have an older sister somebody asked what am i getting most for christmas and it's so good i'm starting in the works and i can't wait to show y'all but i can't tell y'all so because he be watching sometimes he be acting like he don't watch my vlogs but sometimes he do so i can't mm, can't put it in there did i answer this somebody said what can you eat all the time and not get tired of chocolate <laughs> chocolate y'all know that but anyways i'm taking a break have i ever wanted to do music yes i believe i answered that one before as well yes i do i love music i wish i could like the two things i wish i could do for real would be comedy and 
music. If I could sing, I wouldn't want to be a rapper. I would want to be a singer. I want to be a Grammy award winning singer. And maybe one day I will make a song like Lil Duval or whatever. But yeah, I would be a singer. I've always wanted to do music. But anyways, this concludes today's Vlogmas. I'm about to get out of here. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, I will do a, another one, another Q&A with me and Carlos sometime this month, hopefully. And so you guys just stay tuned for that. And I love you guys. Thank you. Shout out to my country cousins. We locked in for life. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, till next time. Well, not next week. Till tomorrow. Good night, y'all.